Hi there, I'm Kinkas. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is the demo video for the Jolin Lab Agogo. I'm pronouncing it the way I pronounce it in my native Portuguese from Brazil, because that word actually describes an instrument, a percussion instrument in Brazilian music, used in samba and uh, afoxé and many other styles. And it's just two bells like this, kind of like two different sized cowbells attached by a handle. And it sounds like this. Right? Or you can even play it squeezing it. But let's talk about the module, right? The Agogo itself is a bank of eight Vactrol based low pass gates. These are active low pass gates, they're buffered and they're interconnected in very interesting ways, almost like normalizations, but not quite because they get buffered and so on. Each input is buffered and fed to the next one. So you can actually plug just a single sound source over here, and then you can use different voltage sources to control each low pass gate and then take uh, separate outputs. The voltage inputs are also cascaded. There's a delay to them because of the slowish response of the Vactrols, which is natural. So you could also use eight separate input sources, sound sources or voltage sources, and then a single voltage source to control them all, right? And also the outputs are mixed in a cascading manner as well. So that means that if you don't use any of these outputs and just take from the last one, you will get a mix of all eight inputs, right? But these also get compounded. For example, if you insert a signal here and send it a voltage, the output over here will be saturated, right? They will be increasingly saturated as you go down the line of outputs. So there are a lot of interesting combinations that can be used with this module, yielding very different sounds and very different effects. Also, there are headers in the back that allow you to connect these in series. So you could have uh, three gogos, for example, connected in series and they will act as one big agogo. So the cascading action will continue over each module. In fact, there are some neat uh, hacks that you can do with the headers, such as feeding the module back to itself and uh, creating some noisy feedback stuff. So yeah, on the surface, it just looks like a whole bunch of jacks, but behind the hood there, there's a lot that can be done with this module. So why don't we check out what it sounds like? And of course, we all love the sound of Vactrols, right? So let's connect one output of the Agogo to an input of my Mordex Data oscilloscope here. Right there. And uh, as a sound source, why don't we use the Generate 3 os oscillator from Draw Analog here. We'll take the full output. We'll plug that right in there. And we'll take the output of the data and send it to the input, an input of my mixer here, just so we can have a volume control. And that mixer is going into Pico DSP for a little bit of reverb, you know, just so we're not doing this dry. And uh, the outputs of the Pico are going into my Tronalog Transmit 2 output module and from there to my audio interface. And uh, already, as we can hear, no leakage, right? Now, let's just, before I even add an envelope or any kind of pinging to this, why don't we simply connect an output of my fader bank, the Honey Badger fader bank, product by yours truly and Pete Hartman, which will be available in kit form soon. Right? In fact, for now, why don't we take the core output of Generate 3, which is a simple triangle wave. As we turn it up, we see the triangle wave uh, in its full form there, right? Perfectly triangular. And as we bring that amplitude down, it really only starts to reduce in amplitude and frequency, because this is a low pass gate, right? as you start getting close to zero here. Mm -hmm. 
Very cool. So I've made a simple patch here to start demonstrating the Agogo. And basically I'm sending the generate three triangle wave, the core wave, to the Agogo input. I'm sending the output number one of my Honey Badger fader bank so that I can either control it manually or send it a CV and have scaling offset and attenuation. The output of that first channel of the Agogo is going into channel one of Mordex data so we can visualize what's happening. And that output is going into a mixer here, the Pico mixer, just so I have some volume control before it goes into the Pico DSP for a tiny little bit of reverb. That to TX2 by Geranalog output module into my audio interface. I've also connected the RLFO here by Takab as a random sequence. So we're using the square LFO output to trigger these envelope generators here, the descent by Sonic Potions, and the voltage output of the sample and hold is uh, just hanging here and we're going to plug it into the generate threes exponential fm input a little bit later so for now let's just listen to what it sounds like so it opens up pretty much fully before even going halfway here this is uh this is normal for low pass gates the response is not linear you get definitely get much more variation in the lower part of the voltage range here as expected for a low pass gate, not only do you get a volume reduction, but it also gets darker, right? That triangle wave starts getting closer and closer to a sine wave as you bring it down, right? Now let's connect that envelope generator output, right? Let's make the uh, LFO a little slower here, right? So this is that nice boingy kind of uh, effect of a low pass gate, right? And I can attenuate it here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, each of these outputs will sound a little bit louder and more saturated. So let's just listen to that a bit. Okay. It's a little bit chunkier. Next one, this one we still, we even hear a little bit of buzz, right? A little bit of fuzz there. And going on, more, more fuzz. Let's make the decay a little bit longer. Maybe a little bit slower here. Next one, different flavor, right? Totally different flavor, it's getting quite a bit of distortion. And just to keep this demo simple for now, we won't use all eight channels for each one of these examples. So up to six is good enough, right? We'll bring it back to the first one here. I could use an LFO too instead, just to see what that would sound like. If I use the even wave here and turn that volume up. We also get kind of that uh, it's a falling saw. That's attenuated sound, so we get into that useful range. You can really hear that filtering now, right? Cool. Let's go back to the envelope generator. And let's plug in the random voltage to the oscillator. Make it a little faster. And there we go, that's that classic sort of West Coast random sound, right? Why don't we connect that random voltage rather, OK, 
Okay, let me do something quickly here. I'm gonna use... Separate the multiple here. So we'll use a longer cable for the gate. And that'll allow me to... Send the random voltage to this other multiple here. And from there to the oscillator. And to the other oscillator as well. I have two of these generate threes. And we can send one core output to modulate the other one. This is getting even more west coasty sounding, isn't it? And why not take that fundamental to the wave folder and we can send that to another input of the Agogo. Right? And now if I take the output from Output number two now, we should get a mix of both. There it goes. All right. But I can also, if I want more control, I can simply use both outputs into my mixer, right? That could be handy. So why don't we do that? We'll take this one just from here and we'll send this other one and notice I don't have to send the envelope generator to the second low pass gate here because it's cascaded down, right? But there's going to be a slight delay. There it is. In fact, why don't I take that from the fundamental output of the first one instead? The one that's modulating the second one. Because this one is not being modulated, so we get a little bit cleaner folding sound. And uh, yeah, let's modulate that folding, right? Why don't we do that? Modulate the fold here with the filter 8 acting as an LFO. Let's make this a little slower. In fact, we could send that um, we can use a different clock and then randomize the clock. So let's take the contour one as the clock. Up here, everything stops. We'll take the contour one rise and use that as the clock. Or the fall maybe better. All right, and we need to send that clock to the clock input of the sample and hold here. Of course, that's why it's sounding unsynced, right? We'll clock in here. Excellent. Now it's synced, and now we can send the random voltage that we've already multiplied here. We can send that to an attenuator here, which could be my select two, or another channel of my fader bank. And we'll send that to the rate input of contour one. So now we have a random clock as well. So this is turning out to be a little bit of a of a tutorial as well on making a generative West Coast sounding kind of a patch. Maybe a little tiny bit more reverb there. And why not also randomize the decay of the envelope? And uh, we'll use another channel of Select 2 for that. So we can attenuate it to taste. Now we'll take this output from select two, and we're gonna make the we're gonna control the decay. All 
right? And we'll send the random voltage up there as well. Less variation there, maybe a little more variation of the clock speed. Can make it a tiny bit faster. And we can also make the oscillators have a wider range of variation. There we go. Get nice, nice bucle-esque kind of sound here with low-pass gates, yeah. And obviously, FM between oscillators, wave folding. All of these are traditionally associated with West Coast or bucle-style synthesis methods. Very cool. Now I can use the other envelope generator if I want for the folded one. It's being simultaneously triggered. By the same gate, but I can have a different control over the decay. So why don't we do that? Let me take another cable here from my cable cube. Super handy solution from Nobatron for cable management. And now what I can do is send, send this one, the decay, send it an LFO from the filter 8, All right, another one. All right. And why, why don't we send another random voltage? So if the random voltage we can slew it too. See? The Takab RLFO has a slew function. So it's a smooth random. Really nice. I even like it. Like it even better. Now I can turn down the folded one here. A little loud, right? Interesting. Now it's still a little repetitive because the filter aid itself is cycling at a fixed speed. So why don't we take a random voltage, right? And rather than connect it straight here, we'll connect it to yet another multiple and then connect it to our clock speed. And then we have uh, another two random outputs here. One of them we can use for the filter aid. That's much more interesting now, in my opinion, anyway. We can make the clock vary even more. Oh, increase the level of the random voltage. And we can make it a little slower. Very cool. So there you have it. This is kind of a, a generative patch done with the Agogo. We've seen how uh, the same input can be sent to multiple outputs. The distortion effect. Oh, yeah. If we want uh, this folded wave, or rather the, the top one, we can grab this output from here, right? So now the... Uh, rather the other way around. Hold on. Let's swap the inputs. So the cascaded outputs are the not the folded, because fold, folding is already a kind of distortion. Right? So we we'll do it like this. So now, if I take this output instead of from number two here, if I take it from further down the chain, it's now super distorted. Can bring that volume down. Of 
Let's just hear that one. No folding. Oh yeah, we need to also swap the envelope generators to get the effect that I'm looking for. So let's compare it from here. Much softer. And from here, much louder. And I can make that envelope louder too. And there you have it. So next, let's I have the Sweet 16 here. Why don't we make a bit of a beat, right? I have uh, one, two, three, four envelope generators and uh, quite a few sound sources. So we can, we can do that. So I'm not gonna bore you with all of the repatching. I will be right back once that is patched. Okay, so let me quickly explain the percussive patch that I made here. I'm using uh, the Sweet 16 drum sequencer, only the first four channels in step sequence mode, which you achieve by pressing the blue button. And then the first button here, it says an S, and then you can choose which channel. This, for example, is my kick drum channel. If I choose two here, we can see what my hi-hat pattern is and so on. The kick drum is the generate three. I'm sending the contour one as an envelope generator, both to the pitch of the generate three, as well as the go go channel one, right, for amplitude. Number two is the white noise from my TACAB RLFO, getting high pass filtered by the filter eight here, and that's going into channel two of a go go, which is being triggered by the second contour one over here. The random voltage from the sample and hold from the TACAB RLFO is varying randomly the uh, fall rate of the contour one. So that gives me a variable decay, right? Since I'm using it as an envelope. Channel three is a sort of a snare drum, which I'm doing by using my second generate three module full output, getting phase modulated by the full output of generate three number one, which is the kick. So I'm using, uh, Generate 3 is doing double duty here. It's both my kick sound and the modulation, the FM source for the snare drum, which is Generate 3 number two. I could probably also send that to the folder to make it a little harsher, but I kind of like how it sounds. And my third voice is the Micron here, which is a full synth voice. I'm not sending anything to the gate. So basically it's just open. The uh, VCA is just open. I'm uh, giving it a little drive. A little bit of uh, feedback here, and I'm sending the random voltage from the RLFO to the pitch of the micron. So this is sort of a melodic, random melodic voice, but it is getting triggered by channel four of the Suite 16. So the triggers are constant, the notes are variable. So why don't we plug our clock in? The clock is the square wave from the uh, RLFO. And let's, uh, oh, by the way, I'm using the uh, GoGo as the mixer, right? Since my Pico mix only has three channels, I'm uh, taking the fourth output out of a GoGo into channel one here of the mixer. And uh, again, that goes to the Pico DSP and through TX2 to my interface. So let's, let's hit play here by plugging the clock in. <laughs> bit of slew out of the tack cap gives it that little glide to the micron Fun, right? Let's uh, high pass filter that hi hat a little more. Give it some resonance. That's a little better. 
A few more steps on the hi-hat here. Let's go back to that kick and make it a little more steady. vary my snare drum thing. Yeah, it doesn't really work too high there. So there you have it. This is a little bit of a sound design uh, tutorial as well. Kick drum, snare drum, hi hat, and the random voice that I can now modulate the filter on. Let's make it a little faster. Yeah, this is better. A better BPM for this. Yep, and the Agogo is the mixer right now, right? Oh, and remember I can get it to be a little harsher if I take the mix output a little farther down. There you go. That's nice too. I do have a drive on the Micron. And then it kind of takes over. Kind of takes over there. Let's make the envelope a little shorter for the bass. Super nice. So this has been the uh, GoGo demo. There's so much more you can do with it, but I won't take more of your time today. Stay tuned for my next video, which will be the demo for the Tabor module, also by Jolin Lab. And uh, that's it. See you soon, and stay noisy. Thank you.